Hi, my name is Eric, Bishop Eric Logan with the Ecumenical Order of Christ, and I'm here to hopefully impart some wisdom, not my own, but what I've been given by our Father in Heaven throughout the course of my life and study of His Word, study of the words of the prophets, and especially that of Christ. Something that is not easy is the acceptance of this wisdom. It's hard for a hard-headed person like myself to accept when I'm wrong and learn from that and move forward. And it's the same for just about everybody. So, I'm going to pray first because honestly that's where it starts. Humbling yourself to the Father. In the name of Rael. I pray to our Father in Heaven for guidance, wisdom, and I give thanks for all good guidance that can bring the Kingdom to Earth, that can help that His will be done on Earth as it is done in Heaven. I give thanks for all, all of His provision, bread physically, spiritually, and psychologically, all the knowledge that we receive and understanding that comes with wisdom. I thank you, Father, for all of your love. Amen. Amen. I'm hoping that as I give this message, someone out there is feeling it and hopefully able to make use of it, not just get a good feeling out of this. I want it to be effective. I want it to make a difference. That's the whole point of bracing myself to stand in front of a camera and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully be of use to my Father in Heaven. So, just to start off, I'd like everyone to, if you have uh, any physical Bible, papers, always great, if you're a lover of tradition myself, but I would also recommend BibleHub.com. It's a great website, has a lot of different translations and you can really see what is intended to be said across these multiple translations for every verse. So we're going to look for James chapter 3, starting with verse 13 for now. Um, this, I'm prob you're probably thinking the same thing I am. I like context. I want to read the whole thing. Do so. Please do. But for now, I'll keep it short. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show his good conduct by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast in it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. I'm going to break it down a bit. It's just three verses, but there's a lot happening there. It starts off by asking, who do you think you're wise? Basically, it presents that question. For you to ask yourself, who's wise among you? Was it me? Just as Christ taught, the fruit will show the quality of the tree. As this verse says, let him show it, not say it or think it, but show it by his good conduct, by deeds done, action taken, effort applied, and humility. See, there's, it's already becoming more complicated. Do all these good things and do it with humility. It's, and at the same time, be wise. Well, I'm trying to do all these good things. I'm not trying to think of myself as great or wise. You might, have, you might be thinking to yourself, but you have to pay attention to yourself. It's not a matter of ego. It's not a matter of pride. It's a matter of awareness and what you're doing. Accountability for yourself and control of your actions, mindfulness of what you do and what comes from it. The fruit that you bear. So do good deeds in humility, not because it makes you an awesome person, or not because if you do this you can declare yourself wise, or good, or righteous. 
Do it because it's good. Wisdom will teach you this, and that will be the fruit of it. Whatever worthwhile lesson you might have learned in your life, the majority of them all seem to come back to the concept of what you put in is what comes out. Now, if you put pride and uh, boastfulness into your efforts, then what comes out of it will surely be to the downfall of that very pride after inflating it and inflaming it for a time. And this process with pride tends to go on and on. It's a classic battle. And it leads me into the next subject that this verse is somewhat covering, or at least alluding to. If you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast in it or deny the truth. I think we've covered that to an extent, and I'll come back to it. But such wisdom does not come from above. It comes from the earth. It's demonic. Let that sink in. It's not just a loose word. It's not just a simple way of saying bad. No, it's actually demonic. There's a lot of confusion about what exactly demonic entities are, or what is demonic, what, how you define that. I go across different religions and you'll see a lot of different interpretations and bits of lore. I'm not going to get into that too much, but what you find across the board, from belief to belief to belief, is one way or another, they influence people, regular, good or bad people, into bearing the wrong fruit, into prolonging a self-serving, self-perpetuating cycle of negativity. And pride is a perfect example. When you, when you feel that you are right, and anything else is going against that, or even slightly different, obviously you're going to block out anything that says you might be wrong, you might need to reconsider a little bit, or compromise just a little. <clears throat> you're going to feel indignant, you're going to feel like you have been wronged whenever something is said, an assessment made, whether or not it had anything to do with you, or a specific moment, one instance, that you may have been connected to, or been at fault for, Pride's going to say, I'm being attacked. This is an attack against me. I'm, I want nothing to do with it. I want to beat it. I want to prove it wrong. I want to lash out. I want to continue the cycle of negativity. And I'm going to tell myself that it's going to work out, that I'm going to be shown for being right. It's going to show itself by my actions, by this negativity that I'm spreading. That's not the way it works. These negative cycles, the negative emotion that comes with it, the anger that follows, the indignation of wounded pride, it just continues to build on itself just like a snowball rolling down a hill. It gets bigger, it gets bigger, and you're going to become more and more proud. You're going to become more and more inflamed with this egotism. And eventually you're going to hit something and all the snow is just going to shatter and you're left with nothing. One little pebble that might have picked up a little momentum. You're left broken. And this is a point where, again, that process can restart and continue. It's a metaphor that very physically has this, a, a, a continued metaphor. Shrapnel from the snowball goes everywhere. And it continues to spread and these little bits snowball on their own and it just keeps going. It doesn't just keep going, but it spreads. Or, you can stop that shrapnel right there. When you're humbled, because God will humble you. He will make you stumble. He will put a stumbling block before you. And I find, in my own life, it's kind of hilarious to me that I find that a lot of the time, when I'm just on my own, by myself, in a negative thought process, a prideful thought process, or just angry, lack of humility, this isn't right, I've been wronged. I find that I trip up, I literally stumble, I think, oh, 
I was messing up just now. I was getting into that rut of negativity. A lot of people, they just stumble and that's all it is to them. God is going to use the world around you to communicate. It might be a stump that's been there for 50 years. It might have been that one little bend just for you. When you stumble, physically or metaphorically, when you see these bumps in the road, so to speak, ask yourself, is there something I'm supposed to be getting from this? Is there, is there a message here? Maybe it's just a good time to stop and check my status just a little bit. Remind myself to be mindful of something a little bigger than myself. A little bigger than this one tunnel vision moment when I'm focused entirely on one little aspect of the big universe. Don't let very real demonic forces continue to push this thought process because when you try to fight these negative thought processes, when you try to rebuke them, yes, they tend to come back. If you read through if you've got Bible Hub in front of you, you're watching this on a computer, I'm sure you can find it. If you just type in Yeshua Christ, or if you really haven't learned by now the false name of Jesus, if you have to use that to find the result, use it and get good fruit from it. But search for Yeshua, rebuking demons, casting out demons. If you read through a lot of these, you'll find that much of the time, two things will happen. He will tell it, be silent. Be silent. Shut up. Stop speaking. Leave this person and don't come back. That's two very important points. The first one being silent. Something to understand about the way a demonic attack works is that that negative process that seems to snowball, well, a lot of the time, for the most part, we're decent people. At the very least, we're okay. We don't want to be bad. We don't want to be prideful. We don't want to be boastful. We don't want to be indignant. We don't want to feel like crap. But we do. Like a drug, like an addiction. We keep feeding it. So... much the way that pharmacia itself is a demonic element in our world and opens many doors to those sorts of things, those sorts of cycles. I'm sure you've all known plenty of people who couldn't quite cope with one addiction or another and you see a lot worse things come from it than just a physical addiction. Just like the way pharmacia itself is in a form of addiction, the addiction to the negative thought process will continue to seek to feed itself. I think I've conveyed that enough by now, but it's not just this natural force that's happening. There is a conscious effort to subvert you, to make you fall, to spread that negativity from yourself to another, and to cause rotted fruit to be born. Christ tells these demons to be silent because a lot of the time those thoughts that enter your head are not necessarily your own thoughts. And I don't want to get too into you know, the notion of hearing voices and all of that. That's not what this is about today. But your thoughts are not always your own. If you study the phenomena of pineal transmission, you'll know that just us simple people, all the time, right? people who have no idea what they're doing or that they're doing it, tend to communicate. Brains, hearts, all of this, pineal glands, communicate. Much more than just body language or spoken. It's much more intuitive. But you have the devices within your body to send non-physical messages. And you have the much greater capacity to receive them. Well, there's a lot out there sending things your way. 
When you pray, you're opening yourself up to an even higher level of this from God. When you sincerely, with great humility, pray. Humility to silence yourself, to silence all of that other noise. And listen for God. But, down here on the lower base, you've got demons feeding nonsense. And some points may even be correct, but are they right? There's a difference there. I want you to understand that when you pray for this to end, when you pray to cut this cycle short, when you have the mindfulness to actively step into this fight and end it, in the name of Rael, I rebuke you. Be silent. Leave me. All who do the will of Satan, leave me. I reject all of Satan's works. Do not come back. Because they will come back. Yeshua himself taught that when, a man, when he cleans a man's house, his temple, his body, when he cleans you of demonic possession or influence, when he sees this, this entity, he's going to see the house clean. They're going to see... It's looking a lot better there, ripe opportunity to tear something up. It's a classic way of Satan to build you up, to bring you down. Well, if you've just been built up by someone else, you're easy taking. A, a desirable target. Something to think about when you're feeling high and mighty. Keep that humility. But when they see this, they tend to come back. If they see the doors wide open, they'll come back. And it's hard to keep that door closed all the time. We're, we're, we're human. You know what that means. It means that we mess up. It's going to happen. Whether literally, physically, or just in our own thought process, our own attitudes, our worldview, we mess up. We get into a negative cycle. Me, when I get tired, I'm usually at my weakest. I have a, a lot of us are this way. When you're tired, there's less patience. You're short-tempered. Your outlook, your worldview becomes a lot lower, a lot less hopeful. But I just I want to make clear that you have the power, if wisdom is with you, to humble yourself and on the authority of God, not your own, on the authority of Rael, whom God has sent, cast out. Satan's works, cast out Satan's, Satan's minions. All things that are demonic or of a demonic spirit, as in, when I say spirit, I mean essentially attitude in this case, because that word is used in many different ways. I bless you for taking the time to watch this, taking the time to hear me out on this. Of course, I hope it's been useful to you. I hope I incorporate it more myself as I continue to learn and grow. I pray for the best for you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.